in your word. Uh, we thank you for the ability that we can pray together. We can lift up these different requests and, and not only pray together, but praise together that you do answer prayers in various ways. And Father, we lift up all these different people that are ailing tonight. We think of Rick Holloway and his situation. We think of uh, Shana as she's dealt with the dentist and Billy. A great report Billy and Rick have had. So that's really good that the Lord's blessed them with that. And Lord, just put, put your hand upon this nation, the decisions that has to be made as, as it comes to the election time. And, and, the, and the people that are doing the process as we as voters help educate us. And, and to constantly pray for this nation and its decisions. And Lord, with school starting, uh, the roads will get crazy. The kids uh, need to get back into school and get back into a rhythm. We just lift those up to you and pray for those. Uh, and constantly have the, the teachers and the children on our, our, our prayer lists as it is a necessity not only to educate our children, but to teach them by people that love the Lord. And we thank you for that. And we thank you for this time as we go into the book of Micah and, and check its nuggets of gold there, Father, that you have in this wonderfully uh, uh, dressed prophet that he deals with the nation of Israel in a very straightforward way. We thank you for this time and we, put, we make sure that we are allowing the Holy Spirit to fill our minds with your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, and as we go to Micah, go to chapter 4 for a minute. Um, but we probably won't be being there for a few minutes. I know just a few people said, four, we're almost halfway through. Don't let it fool you. <laughs> we did three last week. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. You know, the book of Micah does say a few times, listen. <laughs> I won't preach that. <laughs> it does say, listen. Uh, Yes, I will. I will address that afterwards. Um, and yes, I will deal with that. But I, there's a few things the Lord's put on my heart, so it may take a few minutes extra. Um, I was talking with a few people this week, and I think as I address certain things and I see certain things happening in the church, and I'm going to use this word very wide, okay? Um, not just way the church is going. Uh, churches in general are going. And things that are brought up in different um, surrounding elements. The word prophet is thrown around a lot. Have you noticed lately? She, he's a prophet. She's a prophetess. Um, what it's doing is, is downplaying God's word with the word prophet. It's making it sound very like anybody can grab the gift or anybody can make a statement for God. And I want to bring our attention because we are studying the prophet Micah. We know Micah is a prophet. Okay. During Micah's time, there was false prophets. During uh, all times, there's been false prophets. And believe it or not, in these last days that have been since the uh, resurrection and ascension of Christ, there is a lot more false prophets. And we're warned through Scripture about false prophets. So therefore, there's false prophets. And one of the things I want to get down is what a prophet is. And I think we've done this a few times, but I just want to bring out some points and look at some scripture quickly, because um, there's going to be payday one day. And if we voice an opinion as a prophet, we need to be very careful. What we try to do here is teach verse by verse and hear what God has to say by looking at God's word and, and getting something out of it. That's why we call it exegesis. We're going into it and we're pulling, drawing out from it and we're letting God speak to us. Um, our interpretation principles sometimes may be off, and we need to deal with that. But we're not speaking for God by saying, God gave me a revelation. I need to share this with you. So here's, let's just kind of step back. First of all, spot, uh, prophets speak for God to man. Prophets speak for God to man. Okay? God gives them a message, and they go out to man and say, this is what God saith. Thus saith the Lord's. And I want to be really clear on that because when we get in Micah chapter 4 verse 1, he says, it will come about in the last days. So what's he talking about? It's real easy. He's talking about the last days. So it's eschatological in ramifications. He's not just talking about his day. He's talking about the last days. Okay? So um, 
there, these prophets that are given the word of God to give it to man are not giving revelations of their own personal understanding. They're getting it topside down. God is giving them a message and they are delivering it to the people. They're the messengers. What is it? All, the old adage is don't kill the messenger. I'm only the messenger. And they did what? They killed the messenger. Uh, here's the shame, shame on you, though. They killed the messengers. God dealt with the false prophets. Which would you rather be inside? Would you be on? Kind of thing. Um, so that was the first point, basic. Second point uh, what a prophet speaks uh, or voices to the people is God's very words. And I think this is important because when we look at the time period we're in, God revealed himself in times before in, in Hebrews chapter 1 through the prophets. He has now revealed himself through his son, and his son is called in John chapter 1 what? The word. You get where I'm going. So the prophets are to reveal or, or tell to the people what God's word is. And God's word only, and we'll see in the next, we're going to turn to a set of verses in a moment. But they are never to give their assumptions, their thoughts, nor their opinions. Even when I'm sitting here and we're playing around and we're talking about sports or whatever, I try to put this word out. It's my opinion. It's my opinion. Uh, I like d baseball, so I will give you my opinion who's doing what and whatever. But guess what? If you go out and bet on my opinion, you're a fool. I mean, just that's what it comes down to. Don't take my opinion like, okay, it's the word of God. It's got to happen. It's an opinion. It may be a little bit more, uh, bullet, less bulletproof because I know a little bit about baseball, but guess what? I've been wrong about the last seven World Series champions so far. <laughs> so you're, 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 it's, a, it's, a, it's a hit and miss thing. And forget about basketball. I can't even tell you half the team. So it doesn't make a difference. Um, but when we talk about the Word of God, are we hearing what the Word of God says or are we getting man's opinion? So be very careful. So put, put something in Micah chapter 4 and let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 18. Deuteronomy chapter 18. Deuteronomy chapter 18. Uh, let's begin in verse uh, 16. Deuteronomy 18, 16. This is according to all that you, that you asked the Lord your God in Horeb on the day of the assembly, saying, let, not, let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God. Let me not see this great fire anymore, lest I die. And the Lord said to me, they have spoken well. I will raise up a prophet from among their countrymen, like you, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them all I command him. And it shall come about that whoever he will listen will not listen to my words, which I see, which he speaks in my name. I myself were required of him. So basically, the prophet was to speak his words, and the people were to listen. Isn't that funny? Isn't that what Micah's saying? Here, listen. Um, uh, you know, to speak. Is one thing to assume people are listening is a totally uh, another thing. Uh, I don't know if you've ever given them a set of instructions to somebody. You look at them. You know, being a mailman, everybody thinks that's the guy you go to ask for directions. And Lizzie thinks it's the funniest thing. I could be wearing this in Home Depot, and somebody walk up to me and say, "Can you tell me how to get?" And I go, "Are you serious?" <laughs> I was in Kanab, Utah, and somebody walks up to me. Can you tell me how to get to such and such a place? I looked at Lizzie. I go, hey, I can't get away from this. <laughs> but let me tell you what will happen. It's inevitable. You say, go to first light, make a left. Go three blocks, make a right. And at the stop sign, hang a quick left. Okay, kind of thing. And you watch the person the very first time. They'll go to the, the, wherever, the, the stop light or the, uh, or the stop sign, and they'll go the wrong way. And I go, they couldn't get the first part right. I actually delivered, where I delivered mail, part of the community was there was one way out and one way in. <laughs> one way in, one way out. So I said, well, go back out of the community like you came in and hang a right. How do we get out? How, well, how'd you get in? There's one way in and one way out. I said, when you see that stop sign, just hang a right. So I watch them pull out. 
They go right to the stop sign and they hang a left. I said, they're lost. <laughs> but people don't listen. They just don't. It's, it's, it's an interesting thing. And, and you'll say, well, you confuse them too many turns. Well, one guy came up to me and he says, I want to know how to go to West Kendall. It's, 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 an air, it's a helicopter ride from where I was. That's the only way to get there. It's not close. I said, you're lost. Because <laughs> if I gave them the directions, they're not going to get out to the first right. <laughs> um, but God's given people directions and he wrote them down through the prophets and through the writers in the Old Testament. And guess what? They didn't do them. Okay, and there's a responsibility from the prophet to the people and the people to God because it's God's word. Um, and there's a test that came about. And this is important. Verse 20 says, but the prophet who shall speak a word presumptuously in my name. In other words, make him up. Presume this is what God said. How do you do that? This is what God told me. This is what God revealed to me. This is God's word. You just put that moniker on it. And it says, in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or which he shall speak in the name of other gods, that prophet shall what? Die. die. Now, it's not an immediate death, but that means his end is not going to be a happy one. Because God's, he's under the judgment of God at that moment. So here's, here's what's necessary to understand. If you're going to claim to be a prophet in any arena, at any time period ever, your percentage has to be 100. Not 90, what is, ivory soap is 99.3 or 90.9? Is it 99.9? I don't know, I don't use it. All I know is it floats. It's an old, it's an old camp story. Um, but that one slight percentage, you say, well, that's just as good. Man, if I got a 99.9 in my school, I would be happy with the grade. God says, no. My prophets are never wrong because I am never wrong. And I am telling them my word to give to the people that I'm never wrong on. So if today somebody claims, if, let's move it in today's generation. Somebody spoke a word and said, this is what I got from God. And they're wrong. They're a false prophet. There's no other way to put it. Because God is never wrong. And there are people today that are claiming to hear the word of God, and you can't, well, let me, see. okay, you're speaking the word of God. Can I see what psalm it's in? Can I see what book it's in? They said, no, no, this is what God revealed to me. That's being a false prophet. Because you're, presu you're, you're presuming that that's what God has told you. Now, someone will come up to me afterwards. What if God revealed something in his word, and this is what God showed me? That's, that's called illumination, people. That's not revelation. And we've got enough revelation. We don't need prophets anymore. That time period's over with. God's done with prophets. And somebody will also say, well, prophet fort forth tells the word of God. Well, okay, but that's not the same idea. The prophet in this time period spoke for God to the people. Okay? Uh, and then notice what he says. And I think this is very interesting. If, they, if he speaks a word, a word, that means every word counts. Well, it's just one word. Maybe he misspoke or maybe he um, overstepped bounds or maybe he, you're getting a syntax wrong or whatever. God has words. God has nouns and verbs and all that stuff that's involved with that. And God's words are God's words. To the word. To the word. And I think that's important for us to to say words matter, it's God's word, and how we handle the word is very important. And, I, and as I look out today over the field of people speaking and teaching the Bible, and, and it's getting closer to we're teaching what we think or how we feel. And um, the death of what we know as Bible teaching is coming real soon. I, that's not prophecy. <laughs> It's just me seeing the signs of what's going on. That's the, and, and as you see that, you can look around. Because if we, if we were to say, examine what people say and say, if this is them speaking for God, are they right 100% of the time? Are, they, are the words that, that we can verify? You know, it's, it's hard because we're almost academic in this church. 
Because I will say this, is, this word is this in the Greek or the Hebrew, and this means that in this part of speech. And that. You know why that's done? It's not to show, wow, we're so intelligent. It's verifiable. You can open up a, any Greek text and look at the same word and get the same parts of speech, get the same definition and plug it in, and um, our theology kind of generates how we handle the Word of God and say, does this say this, and do, can we prove this is what this says, and how do we handle it? So it's, we want to make sure we're verifiable, because why? We're to examine the people that teach us, right? We're supposed to be Bereans. I don't have a problem with that. Because I'm, not, I'm speaking God's word forth. I'm not giving you something new. Just look at it. Let's look at the chapter and the verse and the page and so on and so forth. Um, I really don't want to ever say, God spoke to me today, and this is what he said to me, um, but I can't find a verse for it. But really, really, it'll preach. You know, um, I just think that's horrific, and that's what's going on. Um, the gift of a pastor teacher is a far cry different than a prophet. Just that there's just that they're whole different things. Um, if anything, we do speak forth from God's word. That's about all. Um, for instance, we can't take this, what I'm talking about, this idea, and say, okay, since we found a false prophet, let's put him to death. That's not our job. <laughs> That's not our But they are under the umbrella of God's declaration of death. And I don't think anybody would want that over them. Um, yes? I... I that's, a, that's an interesting question. I think we have a platform for it in certain areas. In certain areas, they're accountable. Um, for instance, the, there are prophets that spoke out against false prophets, how to deal with that. Well, that was God, again, motivating that. Uh, we're supposed to be Bereans and watch that. We're to warn other people about false prophets here. If there's a, somebody up and, gets out and, pro, and stands up and says, I want to prophesy about something, we need to deal with it in-house. But I wouldn't go knocking on such and such door, whatever direction, and say, you need to stop. Pardon me? Well, that would, uh, regulations is help. I mean, we could speak up in a public arena like this and say what you're doing is, is, is borderlines on false prophecy, but basically we're to warn others to, that are in our periphery to stay away from those things for their health, for their spiritual health. Um, I, I, I did surveying for a long time. And I'm going to tell you, it's a booger if you're off just by a little bit. If you turn an angle, and angles just aren't like oh, 90, 45 and stuff. They got all the way down to the minuscule second, okay? So you're turning an angle, and you're going out two or three miles to measure something, and you're off by this much, you're off by hundreds of feet when you get to the end. You don't want to be a little, well, he's just a little wrong. Let him go. Really? So prophets got to be 100%. percent you got to find where you're looking for. And that's what the deal is that we're looking at. We want to get to the place that that. So let's look at a few verses that deal with false prophets. Um, mostly, I, I want to look at Matthew and some of the New Testament. Because in Matthew chapter 7. So we're just going to look at a few of these. The reason I'm doing this is not to beat on false prophets, but to lift up the prophets. They had a very difficult job. They were speaking for God and the people hate the idea that God's going to tell them what to do and expose the real people that they are, and therefore they persecuted the prophets. Uh, my, uh, Hebrews, Hebrews. Matthew chapter 7. I've got Hebrews in the mind. I've been looking at it all day. So. Matthew chapter 7. And obviously, if you have red letter editions, this is part of the Sermon on the Mount, but um, Jesus again is giving some really good mandates and, and, perifer- and, and items to live life by. And it says, and notice what he says in verse 15. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing. That means they look like the flock. How do you tell them? Apart. It's not easy. It's not easy. But I'll tell you how you do because Jesus tells you how you tell them apart right here. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they're ravenous wolves. So how do you see the inside of somebody that's going to try and teach you something false and lead you in a false direction? Well, Jesus says, you will know them by their fruits. Grape trees produce grape trees. Uh, figs, figs. 
But it says grapes are not gathered from the thorn bushes, are they? Well, of course not. You get grapes from vines. Uh, nor figs from thistles, are they? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit. And <laughs> if you're ordering a pizza, I'll take one. Too. <laughs> Where was I? Uh, verse 17. Even so, every good, fr- good tree bears good fruit. And bad trees bear bad fruit. A good tree cannot produce bad fruit, but nor can a bad tree produce good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. So then you will know them who? The false prophets. You will know them by their fruits. You know, I love believers that say, you know, you'll know somebody if they're a believer or not by their fruits. It does not say that. It does not say that. Let's read what it says in context. You'll know a false prophet by his fruits. And know what you'll know? That the people that he's teaching and what they're doing is it's adversarial to God's word at some point. It may not be, listen, that blatant. Because notice what it says. There's still wolves in sheep's clothing. They look like sheep. They buy like sheep. They, they're, but they're not. And how you'll know is the extended time period that they're involved in, in the fold and they have to be exposed to that. goes on, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? So that means they will prophesy in the Lord's name. They sound very religious and godly. And in your name cast out demons, and in your name perform miracles. Wow. Hmm. Interesting. Did Jesus know ahead of time what would happen? And what is it? he's noticed what they're saying. They cast out demons. That's pretty cool, isn't it? You know, there's a few people I think should be have demons cast out. I wish I can, you know, they do they do what we would call tricks, you know? They 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 do many. Notice what it says. They do many miracles. Many miracles. That gets attention. That brings a crowd. But he says, and they will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. That's a pretty strong mandate against these people that claim that they're prophets from God. And they prophesy in God's name. They mention the Lord's name. And what we take, we got to be good Bereans and make sure we're exposed to people that will teach us the word of God. And in a format that we agree with. Kind of know where I'm going with that? Um, Go to Matthew chapter 24. Matthew 24. You know what's an interesting thing? The format that's usually used. They're not standing on a street corner on Sheridan and 71st kind of thing and declaring some hocus uh, religion and bogus stuff. They're in the flock. For chapter 24, and obviously this has to do with later times, but I think it's applicable for now. In chapter 24, verse 11, it says, and, and many false prophets will arise and will mislead many. Man, or what yours says, what, deceive. I, I, yeah, I think that's probably a better terminology that's there, mislead. But th- they're misleading them because they're what? They're deceiving. They're deceiving them. It's what they're teaching them. And if you notice today, if you want to have, maybe I shouldn't do this. Don't do this. <laughs> but you could check me out. A lot of Bible teachers on TV will not use this. They'll say something and walk away from this and start teaching you. And they'll never go back to that again. And most of the time it's, no, most of the time they go in with a presumption that they're looking and a pretext that they want to make a scripture fit. And listen, you can do that. You can do that. But that's just really, that's not a good thing to be doing. Uh, Matthew chapter 24, 24. For false Christ, listen to this, for false messiahs, for false messiahs and false prophets will arise and will show great signs and wonders so as to mislead, if possible, even the elect. 
That means those people that actually came to the Lord, were called, were saved, came to the Lord, can be misled. They can be. How do you get misled? You don't get fed. And you look for food somewhere and that you can get misled. Um, Mark chapter 13. Mark 13. Verse 21. Mark 13, 21. And obviously, if you have a study Bible, this is going to tell you the tribulation, that this will be in the great, in, within the time period of the Great Tribulation. But I also think things are leading up to that. And we could see very much these signs are involved in today's day and age. It says, Then if anyone says to me, Behold, here is the Messiah. 13.21. I thought I said 21. 21. We'll, we'll be fine. <laughs> Let's start again. And then if anyone says to you, Behold, here's the, the Messiah, or behold, he is he, there, do you believe him? For false Christ and false prophets will arise and will show signs and wonders in order, if possible, to lead the elect astray. But take heed, behold, I have told you everything in advance. <laughs> what more do you need other than here? What more do you need if it's not here? You know, I think we had a guy down the block before I got here um, that used to say, you know, the Lord told me to go up in this thing and pray and tower. You all know who it is. And how do you verify something like that? If you're following, you, just, you can't verify it. So you're going to assume this guy's a, a godly man and the Lord must have spoke to him and we must give him something because we don't want him to stay up in the tower. And I always said, I always said, leave food out. <laughs> It'll come down. <laughs> um, but that's... False prophecy. That's a false. Why do we know that? Because God didn't say it in his word. He didn't need to do that. Um, uh, and the Lord didn't lead me to help him out, so he could still be there. <laughs> Luke 6. Sorry, I just, uh, I just think as we see these things, we look back on those things and say, well, that was ridiculous. But we got things that are happening f- uh, with much more urgency today because... I believe the Word of God is getting watered down to placate the, this generation that's all electronic. You know? Um, remember, the Word of God was on scrolls for a while. You had to go hear the Word of God. You, you didn't carry it in your pocket and have electronic versions. Uh, Luke 6.26 says, Woe to you when all men speak well of you, for in the same way their fathers used to treat the false prophets. <laughs> in other words, if they, the false prophets would come and people would, would, would seek them out. The masses would go to the false prophets. And they would, would do what to the prophets? They would kill them. Because the, the, the false prophets had the words to placate the masses, to tickle the ears that they would listen to. Because it's easy to listen to a message if you're telling me what I want to hear. You know? That's why I don't look at mirrors. Mirrors never tell me what I want to hear. You know? No, they don't. You, you go to certain people, you look at certain things, and you, and you say, is this really truthful with me? And God's word is truthful. God's word is truth. And it will set you free. People are going to tell you things that will make you feel better about yourself, but the Bible will make you know more about your God. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, but that's, that's, he's not prophesying to somebody. He, he's not standing up in a, in, a, in a public and saying, this is what the Lord spoke to me and did to me. What you're saying is the Lord spoke to my heart through the Word of God, and he says this is the direction. Um, I have a really wonderful book. It's called um, What the Doctor Ordered. I think the, I'm trying to remember the name of the book. Uh, this guy's telling about every morning he would get up and he would pray that the Holy Spirit would lead him to somebody to give him the Word of God out. Uh, to give him to evangelize them. It's amazing some of the stories he has, how he ran into people and said, and the Lord said, well, you know, I was supposed to get, for instance, there's one story, he was supposed to go get a haircut. <laughs> he was out in the city trying to, he was giving the gospel and, and doing a 
what do you call it, a revival kind of thing. And he said, he was supposed to go get a haircut, but it ran late, and the train wasn't on time, and it would put him, be, and he said, Lord, I still want somebody. He says, I'll just drop in wherever the train station is, and I'll get a haircut. And he went in, and he started giving the gospel. This little oriental guy that was cutting his hair, and, and he had the razor. He was giving him a shave. And, and yeah, I don't want to ever be wrong when a guy's giving a guy a gospel when he's giving me a shave. <laughs> but he, the, guy was, the guy was in his back room before he walked in there, praying that the Lord would bring him somebody to explain to him the gospel. And you say, well, how did that work out? Because the Spirit is very much involved with that. But the, he could say the, the Spirit led me to go into that place and then stopped me from being on time in the first place to do that. And yes, the Spirit does do that. But there's a difference between the Spirit uh, guiding us and directing our lives and saying, um, and I'm sure most of you have had this happen. And you say, Lord, I really need to speak to that worm, or woman or person about the Lord or this waitress or whatever. And we, ah, I don't do that. So we're just, we're thwarting what the Spirit's put upon our heart. No, but I, I, there's no problem. No, no. That pr- the prophecy is when I say in a, in a p- group of people, this is what the Lord told me we need to do. We need, wow. we need to start doing such and such. And, or here's what the, words, the Word of the Lord says, exterior to what the Word of the Lord is. In other words, it's not verifiable. I just said the Lord spoke to me today, and I think he put upon my heart, we really need to go in this direction. And, do so. and it's different because a group of men may say, well, the Lord is kind of dealt with us as a church body, we need to do such and such. That's, that's it's cooperation amongst men. We don't say, here's what the Word of God is as far as prophecy having. This is coming about. This is the direction we need to go spiritually. It's more of a, we're talking about a physical. Now, this is going to happen. Yeah. Or the self-proclamation, I'm a Christ, I'm a Messiah. Uh, the, it, some of these things aren't blatant. That's the problem. <laughs> We just got to see how the words are used, and words are important, how people say certain things. Um, but the Holy Spirit does direct us. He puts us in places like, why am I here at this time, you know? Why? And I think some things we, don't, we do need to do and we don't do is, why did the Lord put you in such and such a place at such and such a time, and that person showed up? You ever think of that? And say, why is that person, that person, wow, they got a lot of problems, a load of problems. Why are they in my periphery all of a sudden? You've got an answer for them. So the Lord does direct that. But you're not giving a prophecy out and going beyond the Word of God. You're just saying, this is what the Word of God. And prayerfully, when you give out the gospel, you're giving out the Word of God So to the person. We're going to show them. That's why it's good to show them the verses. Tell them to read them to you. What does this verse say? Don't just spout off six or seven verses and say, okay, now the Lord convicted you, I'm done. Let them read them to you. Let's carry a Bible once in a while. I won't hurt you, unless it's too big. <laughs> you know? Um, yes? <laughs> you can interrupt anyway, regardless if she did or not. And she didn't interrupt, she asked a question. <laughs> yes? I have several questions. Okay. Let me, the, Yes and no, but go ahead. With the exception of Jesus. Okay. Because okay. um, it seems like all the references that you're bringing about, about false prophets is in the New Testament, warning when prophets aren't supposed to be there anymore. Correct? Well, go ahead. I'm listening. My concern is the very first verse you went to about... In Matthew 7, yes. I understand what you're saying. They use that as well. We have to look for those false. I feel like prophet has been used as teacher a lot. Okay. Am I wrong? Am I? I feel like that has. I don't understand how that verse is in scripture as much as I've heard it twisted. Okay. If there's going to be just just kind of let's back up. There's prophets in the Old Testament. Jesus is the prophet, and there's still many more false prophets to come. That's what we've already read. 
Okay, so therefore, the office of prophet, God has no longer put his stamp over. It doesn't mean people know that. You understand what I'm saying? So we could say, and this comes across sometimes in church, we could say, okay, there's not the office of prophecy, but when people speak, are they speaking as a prophet? And sometimes that's where the sheep and wolves clothing come. Because we've got to listen. Are they speaking forth God's word, from his word, or are they speaking for God? Absolutely. Not our, not our people sitting in our pews. No, because there could be people in the pews. Believe me, I've been a. But if you're saying that they have to get in that position. No, they could do it. They could do it amongst themselves too. You can somebody. Somebody back there talking about somebody else. But but no, but somebody can come up to you after a class or during a class, and we're discussing maybe not even what class was about, and they say, "Well, the Lord told me this is." Hang on. <laughs> and I got five more verses to go to. That's a good thing. Um, say, here's what this, I, there's a difference between here's what I got out of this lesson, but here's what the Lord told me that this lesson should have been, and can we find this is what it says in the scripture. You understand the difference? Because um, the Lord is going to apply it differently to us, application, but he's not going to say something that's not within the context of scripture. And I, maybe I should give examples of that at some point. So that's probably the, you done? Because yes. I got it. Go ahead. Go ahead. That's a really good example. And he is there telling me stuff that, hey, I don't know how she would have known. And he explains it to me. And then I start to think, well, that's not what I was talking about. That's what I was talking about. That's what I was talking about. But that's a pretty good example. Instead of saying, I was reading this in Scripture, and I think this may help you with something, and, re- and taking her to Scripture and say, here's the Scripture. But all these are kind of good. But um, let's go to one. Let's go to two more verses. That's a ver- three more, sorry. two different books. No, you don't be sorry. They really don't. Um, and then I, I think we we can come, ask a few more questions. I don't care if we chase a rabbit. It's good to hunt. Second Peter. Go to Second Peter. Second Peter, chapter one. I couldn't find them. It was First Peter. Everybody get to Second Peter. Don't be like me. Go to First Peter. Second Peter. Verse 19. Uh, verse 19 says, And so we have the prophetic word made more surer, to which you will do well to pay attention, as to a lamp shining in a dark place, until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. But know this, first of all, I guess this is, means this should be a priority, right? <laughs> no prophecy of Scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation. Okay. For no prophecy was ever made by an act of human will, but men moved by the Holy Spirit spoke from God. I think that's pretty cl- clear what Peter is trying to say, isn't it? Or, well, okay, let's uh, get one more from Peter. Go to the next verse. verse. And sometimes, again, chapter breaks are erroneous. Verse 1 of chapter 2 says, But false prophets also arose among the people, um, just as there, were, there will also be false teachers among you, mm-hmm. who will secretly induce destructive heresies, even denying the master who brought them, bringing swift destruction upon themselves. And many will follow their sensuality, and because of them, they will, they will, the way of truth will be maligned. Okay? Uh, that was um, first Peter, Second Peter, <laughs> one nineteen through 2.2. Two. Let's go... 
go ahead. This verb yes, yes. Right. Just as there will also be false teachers, yes. So it's using, but our understanding of a teacher, you're a teacher. Hopefully. I'm so, not doing so well tonight. <laughs> this, this, could be, this could be troublesome. Let me shut this off. No, there, Yeah. In other words, he says, read what it says in verse 1. But in my version, the New American Standard, there were false or counterfeit prophets also arose among the, prophet, among the people. Just as there will also be false teachers among you. So, the, the, yes, there's a duality there. Um, but, okay, we'll, for, for Sam, for your conversation's sake... Check your teachers out. Make sure they're speaking God's word. I mean, I don't have a problem. It says examine those. Uh, let's go to First John one four. Uh, First John. First John four one. First John four one. And this is this will help you with the teacher thing, Sam, and all of us with the idea of prophets. Um, First First John four one. Um, and notice that there's so many writers have kind of discussed the idea of false prophecy and false. We can go with false teaching too for this sake. Um, because first John four one says beloved. So who's he speaking to? Believers. believers. Okay. Fellow believers. Do not believe every spirit. Now I, I'm sure it doesn't say don't do not believe every Holy Spirit. It doesn't say that. Okay. Uh, so it says do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. How many? Many. Many. Um and I think um, one of the things that happens, I see a lot, is people are exposed to things. And if it says Christian, it's got to be good. And I, I just say this. You know, I, was, I, I haven't done it in a long time, but if you've ever gone to the Christian bookstore and look at the top ten list of bestsellers, I'm, probably somebody could pull them up right now, but I'm sure a few of them are in there um, about the kid that went to heaven. But it was what? The book is not what? It's, it's, not, it's a lie, isn't it? The last I think they exposed it as a lie, and it was on the top ten still. The last I, I haven't checked in a while. So. Heaven, yeah, that's the kid. Um, but it's, it's been already kind of said, oh, that was all. A, yeah, you know, but it was a top ten book on the Christian bestseller list. Really? Because we don't have the ability to discern and examine these things. And the first thing we should have done is see if it rolls up to put in firewood kind of thing. Um, let's, let's go to 1 Corinthians. Let's close this real quick. <laughs> quick. I didn't think this would be quick, right? 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And we can, we can just look at this a little bit. So. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And I was, I was going to use this as a segue to go into tonight's class, so we're going to segue in, in t- <laughs> through it a little bit and probably pick up next week. Um, <laughs> You know, when we're studying the prophets, I don't think we really grasp the highness of a prophet. And I don't mean highness like their royalty, but God used these people to bring his word, and their word was very important. It was God speaking through these people. And it says in verse 1 of chapter 10, For I do not want you to be unaware, brethren. (laughs) What's he assuming? They're unaware. Um, It's a hard thing. Because as a Bible teacher in different venues that I'm in, I go in there with some assumptions. What do these people know? What, if I use certain words, will I lose them? How much do they understand the scripture? You know, um, but we have churches full of ignorant brethren. Wouldn't that be a great name of a church? The Ignorant Brethren First Baptist <laughs> Church on the corner of I don't know and I don't care. <laughs> You know, kind of thing. Um, but we do. We have people in church that are just there to, to, to get a little message for the day and make them feel a little better about things. But Paul says you can't do that. I don't want you to be un- uh, ignorant, brethren, that our fathers were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Um, just so you know, the word baptized has nothing to do with water. Moses was on dry land. 
word baptized has to do. They were identified with Moses. Moses was going to make a covenant people as they were going through into the promised land. And they were identified with him. They were people of Israel. They all ate the same spiritual food. They all drank the same spiritual drink. And they, they, for they were drinking from the spiritual rock which followed them. And the rock was the Messiah. The Messiah. Let's do it right. So they understood that. Uh, nevertheless, with most of, the, of them, God was not well pleased, for they laid low in the, they were laid low in the wilderness. Why? Because they didn't believe God's word. Right? Because if you don't have faith, it doesn't please God. And he says they were not, God was not well pleased with them. They didn't have faith that God would carry out what he had said. The, they had faith in God. You know, let's back up for a second. Just we got five minutes. Well, let's kind of put ourselves in Exodus. Dad comes home and says, "God says this is God's word. God said we're gonna we got to paint blood on the on the lintels, and we'll do that later because we're good people. God will take care of us. It doesn't matter later." And a little daughter would look up at him and says, "No, Dad, we need to do it now. It's God's word." And he goes, "Well, God doesn't really say what God really says. He knows we're good people." And the little girl who was the Number one in the family would look up at him and say, Dad, aren't we going to do the blood now? Aren't we going to put the blood on Because my life's at risk. Put the blood. And Dad says, no, no, we're, we're really good people. Look at the lives we've led. We've been really good. We've been obedient slaves. We're loving people. We've always focused on the Lord and everything we've done. So why don't you, Dad, go out and paint the door? Oh, later. How would you feel about that situation? Doesn't it get you? Would you be willing as a father to give up your daughter for the sake of not listening to the word? And they all listened to the word to get out. Think of that. They all got out. They had to obey God. They had to believe that God's word was God's word and to do what God said because the prophet said to do it, which was Moses. I don't even know how Moses got this word out that night. It fascinates me the logistics. I mean, they didn't even have Morse code. You know, let's get out on the tickers and put it out on, on Western Union. Now, if you don't know what Western Union is, we'll talk later. Because that really marks how old you are. Um, but there's no, there was no way to communicate it other than what? You have a bunch of people, go tell a bunch of people. Now you go find a bunch of people, tell a bunch of people, and do it, do it fast. We've got to get this done really quick in the next couple hours kind of thing. Um, but when they hit the wilderness... When they were wandering, as they were going to the Red Sea that God had parted on dry land, they didn't trust God for the rest. Where's water coming from? I'm thirsty today. What's with this manna? Every day, the same thing you're bringing us. But verse 6 says, These things happened as an example for us that we should not crave evil things. They also craved. Now, it's interesting. What was the example there was a duality in the example, right? It was what, how the people responded to God, but it was what God had done for them. And if they really grasped the God who had done the things they did, really understood and, uh, and grasped the love for the God they had, they wouldn't have craved the evil things. Because God says, I am God, have no other God before me. And then he goes on, and, and, and do not be, be idolaters, which means I don't have... God is number one. I have something else in the place of God. So the result of not putting God where he is and knowing who God is, it's going to be idolatry because you're going to worship something other than God. As some of them were and were written, the people sat down to eat and drink and stood up to play. Another result of this not following God was immorality. And some of them did later in in this story, 23,000 fell in one day. Now, if you go back, here's the interesting thing about the Word of God. It says 24,000 died. You say, hey, there's a discrepancy. No, there's not. See, God is important to every word he says. It says 23,000 died in what? In one day. Next day, another thousand died. There's 24,000. See how important that is? To read the words? It says, verse 9 says, Nor let us try, uh, try the Lord as some of them did, and they were destroyed by serpents. So he's given a whole history of Israel's disobedience to the very word of God. Nor grumble, another result. 
You ever notice the results of not following God? You're going to replace God with something else. You're going to replace people with something else because you're going to be immoral. And then you're going to grumble and moan and whine all the time about what God hasn't done for you. As some of them did and were destroyed by the destroyer. Now these things, and he says it again, these things happen as, to them as an example. And they were written in, in for our instruction upon whom the end of the ages have come. Therefore, let him who thinks, hmm, he stands... Take heed lest he fall. No tempt, and then this verse that we quote over and over lives in the midst of all this. No temptation has taken you, but the such is common to man, and God is faithful. Notice how God's put in there. What's the, what's the whole press uh, um, apex of everything? God is faithful. That means what he says, he's faithful to. God is faithful. Who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation provide a way of escape that you will be, may be able to endure. Therefore, my beloved, flee from idolatry. How do you flee from idolatry? Serve the living, true God. Worship Him only. Notice what it says. I speak as to wise men. You judge what I say. So his assumption is his crowd is, has an understanding and a fear of God and they're wise people. Take my words for what they are in instruction. Um, Now, uh, the reason I read read these was to get us back into uh, Micah. uh, Because Micah, we're not going to go there. Obviously, we had about two seconds. Um, Boy, that's pretty bad. (laughs) I I did. We were going to go all the way to Micah chapter 5. But we'll get there next week. Um, But the the emphasis I want to make more than anything, we're dealing with a prophet. And sometimes when you say minor prophets, you put them together and it's not good. You put the word minor with anything, you ever notice it just dampens the whole thing? I play baseball, who? Minor leagues. (laughs) You ever think of that? I play for the major leagues, yes. Minor leagues, no. (laughs) You know? It's just a minor cut. It'll get better in a few days. Oh, I want to, you know, this is minor kind of thing. Yeah, it's minor. So in our minds, minor means it's less important. It's not that big a deal. And these are major importance in a small little box kind of thing. These guys have some power to say. Um, and when we deal with Micah, he's going to tone, tone, tune to the last days, dealing with the restoration, the, the regathering of Israel that hasn't happened. And he hasn't seen it. And yet he knew it was the promises like Hebrews chapter 11 says at the end. He hasn't seen the promises, but he stood on them and gave them out because he knew God would carry them out. And that's the kind of God Micah served. A God who was true to the very words he said. And that's why it's important. We look at the words and we teach the word as God's word. Any other questions? Since we... No, we're good. We're good. We're good. We all have it kind of down that they're... Uh, okay. It's going gonna, it's gonna to get worse, though, the false prophets, because it's going to be harder to tell. We have to be really discerning believers and look at what we're, what's out there and do it with a very wide-open understanding of the Word of God. And this is really interesting. God wants you to come to Him in His Word and hear from Him. He wants that. Otherwise, He wouldn't have given it to us. Ever think of that? And in America, we are so blessed... Uh, just in this room, various uh, translations. So you can get the Word of God. Now we got to get it and listen to it. So, all right. That was, that was non-Micah lesson number five. <laughs> Let, let's, 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 let's pray. Wow, that was like, whoo. Father God, what a gracious opportunity we've had to spend time sharing with one another, hearing from you, Father, that uh, uh, you know what's out there. You know that... We're, we're, we want to be part of a flock that follows the true shepherd. And the only way to do that is to look into his word, to hear from him, and to put him on the place he rightfully be- belongs, that he is the sovereign, almighty God, and that we serve him. And we thank you for this time in Jesus' name. Amen.